Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship as we gather together as the Willow Grove United Methodist Church. This morning as we begin our series, our Lenten series, focusing on healing, we turn to the story of Jesus calming the storm as a reminder of our invitation to be part of the healing that has to do with the healing of creation and our interconnectedness with creation. It is with that mind that we turn our hearts and our minds as we center ourselves on our call to worship. We invite Dave, Liter Dave Kistner to serve as our liturgist this morning. Good morning, please stand and join me in the call to worship. Today we continue our Lenten journey of healing and recovery as we focus on the healing of creation and the very gift of our planet as essential to our spiritual lives. We are vessels, holy and whole, yet broken, needing the one. Open our bodies and souls, healer divine, come. Please join in the opening hymn, Stand Up and Bless the Lord. It's number 662 in the in the red hymnal. seated. As we consider the health of humanity, we cannot ignore the need to heal the very planet that sustains us. We live in increasing chaos of a stressed environment and culture of greed, which hoards resources. We must protect the jewel that is our home, restoring something beautiful from scars of the past. We can do this only as we discover that we are in the boat with Jesus, the one who shows us our power to turn it around, to calm the storm. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, in the beginning, you created this universe with a phrase, let it be, and the waters and dry land, the sky and the creatures were formed. You set humanity among these wonders and invited us to care and honor all things. We have not successfully answered that call. See abundance as a feast that would never end. We gorged ourselves, taking more than we could replenish at a rate that could not be sustained. We are beginning to comprehend the magnitude beginning to see that things cannot just keep going as usual and not have dire consequences. We are frightened, which is partly why we are slow to accept it. We are witnesses to water, wind, and wave, fire, drought, and earthquake that signal it is time to make real change. 
Too often we think there is nothing we can do, that the change required is too great. It all feels overwhelming, and so we look away. Help us, healer. Show us our ability to chart a different course. Show us the small things we can do to make a difference. We have our inaction. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we lift our prayer for the healing of our planet and a clear sense of our part in its restoration. Hear these words. Let the light of Christ shine strongly through you. Be connected to the center of light that came at the birth of creation. And know this, Jesus asks us to do hard things and to make hard changes, but knowing that we are capable we can make simple changes in order to heal this planet and we can rest in the calm of Christ in the midst of the storms that are around us. Let us take deep breaths, letting this truth fill us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let the Church of God say, Amen. Amen. That's a really, really beautiful um, hymn, very meditative and um, deeply centering. Thank you mu very much for that um, piece. As we move towards our message and into our message this morning, the scripture that I would like to share with you um, is a scripture again from the Gospel of Matthew. Um, we come to this lesson, um, hearing in it two parts. The first is an exchange that is an invitation as um, Jesus acknowledges and sort of speaks in the exchange to the demands that are the demands of, of following him and uh, the invitation that, that what we must give of ourselves is great and that it means walking away sometimes uh, from, from certain things, um, certain rituals, certain things that have become habits in order, in order to follow him towards a greater change. But at the same time, it also uh, moves into another place of, of speaking truly of our very realistic fear our very realistic fear of being overwhelmed, of how in the power of creation that we see in this story, we witness and see very clearly the, the magnitude of God's power and how we are humbled by it, yet still called to be God's hands and feet. Hear now these words from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with the 18th verse. Now when Jesus saw the crowds around him, Jesus gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, First, let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. And when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea, a windstorm so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus was asleep. And the disciples went and they woke him up, saying to him, Lord, Lord, save us. We are perishing. And Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then Jesus got up and rebuked the winds and rebuked the sea, and there was a dead calm. The disciples were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this? What sort of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us bow our head in prayer. Gracious God, we have been on a journey over many weeks, we have thought about dis different aspects of our own desire for healing and for wholeness. 
acknowledging the brokenness that we feel oftentimes in many different ways. As we come now into this time and this place, Lord, allow us to open ourselves once again to hear your divine word prepared for us this day. May we be blessed by your word which has been prepared and is proclaimed. And may we find renewal and restoration. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you in your sight. Amen. So we have, over these weeks, spent time thinking about physical health and healing, economic aspects of brokenness and healing, mental health and healing of our minds and the restoration of creativity. Today we are invited to think about how we are just one little speck in the midst of an incredible cosmos, in the midst of an incredible creation for whom God cares, for whom God has assured us that the numbers of the hairs on our head are numbered and known to him, and yet also who holds all of the rest of the midst of this divine creation in balance, who has invited us into relationship to be those for whom there is healing, and for in this place, creation might be returned to that great place as it was in the Garden of Eden. As I thought about our particular context, and as I thought about what perhaps has hit the hearts and the minds and the souls of our community and our congregation as we think about creation, as we think about events in particular that have impacted us and how that draws us further into understandings of what is in fact happening in the cosmos. I could not but help think of how precious water is to us as a resource, a resource that is so very every day, it is so very easy for us to take it for granted. As those that live in the Western world and live in this privileged community, the opportunity for most of us to turn on the spigot and have clear crystal water come to us, which can refresh and renew us and sustain us in incredible ways, is almost so accessible we can forget about it. Well, that is, unless perhaps you are like me and are not always so good at hydrating day to day to day. My first secretary at my first church, after I was running around in the midst of busy days and could not help but get over selling her, my, my fingertips were cold and my feet were cold, reminded me, Lorelei, you have to pick up a glass of water and drink from time to time. So many ailments within our physical bodies can be healed by the gift of this precious gift of water provided to us sometimes without our full consciousness. It cleanses our body, washes ailments away, restores balance, helps us sleep better, lose weight better, process our nutrition better. And yet we have seen and heard either country over just recent years that when this is, is taken from us, how much we can take it for granted. You remember just a few years ago when we heard that there were wells throughout Horsham and Hatboro, 
fire retardants off of the airport that had perhaps swelled into the groundwater and our own neighbors were without clean water. We cannot forget Flint, Michigan. But we are a privileged society and a community for whom that in the massive resources that we have, we're often able to transport water to those that were without fairly quickly, within reason. And yet as I also think about who the people of this community are and of our congregation, I also find myself wanting to back up and offer thanks for the very delivery of that water that has made it as an everyday thing and so many of our households are through scientific advancements and changes that have happened so rapidly some who sit within our pews remember days that were much different. The invention of plastic and plastic as an everyday resource that just about wraps and encapsulates almost everything that comes into our home. Your bread has not just one layer of plastic, but two. You take your bread home in another plastic bag and that water that made its way as a precious resource when needed back into our community, often in plastic bottles. But like I said, I want to start with a huge thank you about who the Christian community has been and what it has taught me and our due thanks to many of our elders here. For they remember when Coca-Cola was not in plastic bottles, when it was in glass bottles. They remember taking their grocery homes in bags before it became trendy to do it again in carts or bags that they took with them. Their generation grew up not perhaps in the abundance that we did. And out of that formation, out of necessity, were conservation-minded. And they taught those conservation values to us. They were clear about the need to acknowledge the resources that we have been given to use them and to use them well. To be respectful of them, whether financial, whether they were perishable, food items, or perhaps if they were even home goods. That which we have is to be treated with care and respect. And this extended so clearly even into the way they taught us to walk within the world, to be respectful and careful. For many who helped raise Christian boys and Christian girls in the traditions of scouting, the words leave no trace continue to ring strong. And for that, I am so very grateful. And yet even around all of these lessons which they taught us, which we have held fast to, which we have wrestled with, the world has kept rapidly changing around us. Perhaps because it became cheaper to produce and cheaper to, sh to ship, the glass milk bottles disappeared for plastic ones. And such are the trends that we have seen all throughout our lives. Trends that came from sources much bigger than ourselves. Forces that were working much bigger than ourselves. And yet, I find myself with them in horror 
when I drive some of the on-ramps and the off-ramps of our highways, where our use of things like single-use plastic litter the highways? Are we showing our love for the very gift of creation that we have? How were you taught to walk in this world? To hold this physical world with respect and care? What lessons have you taught your children and which ones do you see us struggling with as large communities and nations? It is true that we have come to live in a culture of convenience, a culture that is the quicker we can obtain something, the faster we can obtain it, the cheaper we can obtain it, the better. Perhaps some of it comes out of wrestling with that same notion of thriftiness if we are to make our pennies matter. And, and yet, as we spend them, which other of these impacts do we participate in? Might we challenge? Having wonderful middle schoolers at this time in my parenting life, it often forces me to look back and wonder, what the heck was I doing to my own poor parents back in the day? I say that in kindness and love and respect. I love this new stage, and yet it is new and challenging and different. And one of the things that I am also reminded is the opportunities that we have as the kind of community, the community that we really truly are right here, right now, without much alteration. The gift to live intergenerationally for us to reach out to these young people that are in our midst, to hear them, but just as importantly, to tell them our stories. See, the stories of, of thriftiness and respect and care of creation were not stories that were unfamiliar or things perhaps that had not been embedded in me also as a young adult but as a fifth grader, excited to be bringing home what I was learning in the day, the opportunity to talk about the dolphins and the oceans and what plastic was doing even 30-some years ago to our oceans was a topic of dinner conversation. Today, I am astonished at the things Will teaches me. How he reminds me how incredible this cosmos is. How far the stars that we can see reach. How far the light that is only just reaching us has been traveling. How much we should hold in awe the very earth on which we walk. What can we do? as we, we feel the leanings of the brokenness of our creation? What pragmatic things, perhaps, can we do even in these small little spaces that we live? We can begin with those conversations. So important to hear stories back and forth both ways to be curious about what the other is learning and to imagine different solutions to the convenience-driven, sometimes greed-driven ways we have just come to call all too common. We can do things like, even as we move to rid ourselves of the stuff of this life, we can participate in things as simple as the ASP clothing and shoe drive. 
that give things that are no longer necessary or useful to us another life, another place, rather than simply filling a landfill. And we can appreciate even that simple gift of water that sustains. As you turn on your tap this afternoon, tomorrow, and into this next week, let us pray for those for whom such a resource is not available quite so quickly through war or disease or other environmental challenges. Let us not only tread lightly, but tread with incredible and deep respect. And may this one, the one who stills the storms, the one for whom when such conversations and such problems become so overwhelming that we feel powerless. Let us remember how he welcomed us at the back of the boat and calmed the storm. In Jesus' name, amen. As we turn to our announcements and prior to communion, um, just a couple of announcements I want to remind you of. Um, I would like to continue to thank you for your incredible generosity, uh, for your gifts towards the Ukraine. Um, at last count, I think we have collected almost uh, $2,500, somewhere right in that range. And I want to thank you for your generosity and your compassion um, in so sharing. Um, this coming afternoon, for those of you that might have been interested but might have missed it, um, we will be actually sharing in our second uh, session of reflections on the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, we'll be doing that this afternoon at three o'clock in the chapel as a makeup session for the one that we missed on the 20th. Um, and so we invite you to come out and to join us. And if you can't join us in person but might like to join us in a hybrid way, um, you can jump online through our um, hybrid Sunday morning Zoom link. Um, also, you'll see the schedule for um, our Holy Week services, and right also in the midst of that will be our stained glass presentation on Tuesday, April the 12th. Um, there will also be a Saturday work day and a number of um, Altar Guild preparation days this coming Friday, Saturday, Monday, Friday, <laughs> all the way through these next couple of weeks. So um, if, if the opportunity uh, to come and be present with other people and participate in those ministries uh, would be a welcome thing, uh, we are definitely looking for a few more volunteers. Um, the opportunity to decorate the space together, um, to freshen it up, and to be sure that we are prepared to be hospitable as we move into Holy Week um, is a wonderful gift that we offer, not only for those that are currently gathered, but, but for those uh, that we will expect as visitors um, on Easter Sunday. Um, I would invite you to just look over the rest of the announcements. Uh, we are receiving through this next week our final Easter dedication, so please get that form in. Um, you can turn it into the office uh, or throw it in the plate this morning, um, and we will look forward to including that in the Easter bulletin. And without anything else, I would also then invite you to make sure that you look over our prayers and just many of the wonderful congratulations and achievements of many of our young adults uh, for whom we are so very proud over these last number of weeks. Let us now uh, receive our morning tithes and offerings as we give thanks to God for all that he has given us.
Gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts, for the teachings of our ancestors, for the belief they had in us that we could do great things through and with your power. May these gifts be used to continue to sustain this community and continue to offer healing in all forms out into this world and to the larger world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated and we will begin and share in our sacrament of Holy Communion beginning on page 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. In the beginning you breathed into raw materials, creating and animating containers of beauty and goodness. We, your holy vessels, O oh God, were fired in the kiln of love until we shined with your light. Susceptible to shattering, though, we find ourselves broken, at times unable to remember your promise of repair and healing and restoration. But you remind us time and again that though broken, we are held in the presence and made whole in your grace. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, a holy vessel of divine presence on earth. Your Spirit anointed Jesus as a container of grace in the form of preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind setting at liberty those who are oppressed and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those who were considered too broken for company. By your baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and restoration resurrection you gave birth to the path of healing and recover and delivered us from our own despair and isolation and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit when jesus ascended he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and holy spirit we know we are not alone and on the night in which he gave himself up, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to you, O God. He broke the bread and shared it amongst his friends, whom we know as his disciples who followed him, saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and the healing of the world. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of the healing, life-transforming acts in Jesus, we come offering ourselves as a holy and living gift in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us your healing spirit through Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, healing agents in a broken world, offering life blood of hope. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at that heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, healing God, now and forever. Amen. Let us, as those called the children of God, share in the prayer which Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ, the healing of Christ that pours through us into this world. The table has been prepared. You will be invited to come forward at the direction of the ushers. For those of you that have joined us on Zoom and will be partaking at home, you are invited now to receive the body and the blood of Christ in Jesus' name.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we do give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us, for our healing and wholeness and restoration. Grant that we may now go into the world in the strength of your spirit to serve others and give of ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning can be found on page 150, and we will be sharing in God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens. And as we go forward from this place, as we remember the gift of creation as it has been given to us, and as we are invited to restore it, let us hear these words of Rachel Carson as inspiration. The more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and the realities of the universe, the less taste we will have for destruction. Amen.